we move on to the next part of your chapter which talks about electric potential energy and electric potential now this has some similarities to your gravitational potential energy and your gravitational potential in your gravitational field we talk about gravitational potential energy u right here we talk about electric potential energy w and then in gravitational field chapter we talk about gravitational potential gravitational potential phi now we talk about electric potential v okay so same quantities again now when you're talking about electric potential energy the layman terms or the easy way to understand it would be the energy possessed by a charge due to its position in an electric field. Okay, an easy way to understanding what is electric potential energy is just the sim simply the energy possessed by a charge due to its position inside an electric field. Okay, but when you are asked to define what is electric potential energy or electric potential, we do not use this definition. This is not the formal definition of your electric potential energy. In AS, this one may have been acceptable, but in your A2, we have a more specific meaning to it. Uh, in your case here, in A2, we define electric potential energy as just simply the work done in bringing a charge from infinity to a point in the electric field. Okay, it is a bit similar to your gravitational potential energy, which is defined as work done in bringing a mass from infinity to a point in the gravitational field. Here, we just change out the terms for mass to charge only. All right. Uh, the terms for gravitational field to electric field, all right? And here, when we want to define out the equation for electric potential energy, you will need to use this equation. W is 1, 4, pi epsilon naught, Q, Q over R. Again, this one would be similar to your GPE. In your gravitational field chapter, it was negative GMM over R, right? All right. So what you saw here was that it was the product of the masses divided by distance multiplied by constant. Here you see it's the same thing. It is the product of the charges divided by distance multiplied by constant. Same thing. All right. So there is the similarity there. Now then if I work, go one step further and ask you what is electric potential, Electric potential is just simply the work done per unit positive charge to bring a test charge from infinity to a point in the electric field. So it is V equals to W over Q. You get 1, 4, pi epsilon naught Q over R, which in turn will give you some similarity with your gravitational potential. In gravitational potential, it was u over m then you get g m over r you get negative g m over r you have a case where you're talking about the main mass divided by distance multiplied by constant here you have same thing again main charge divided by distance multiplied by constant and then here you see it was g p e divided by m here is e p e divided by Okay, how do I know that this is EPE? It's because of the wordings they use. You're talking about work done to bring test charge from infinity to apply electric field. It's actually this definition already, which is EPE. So when you add this one per unit positive charge, it's actually EPE over Q. This is EPE over Q which is this one. So you get 1, 4 pi epsilon naught QQ over R divided by Q, you eliminate off the small Q, all right? So that is what you get, okay? Now, without going so much into the explanation part, remember I told you before that your 
gravitational potential energy GPE must always have negative G must have most always have the negative in the expression the negative sign is compulsory and then after that we mentioned I explained it to you before why is it that your gravitational potential must always be negative now when you're talking about electric potential energy and gravitational potential you do not need to put a negative sign to it this is where it differs a bit from your gravitational potential uh, from your gravitational field for your gravitational field you will always have the negative sign here this sign is always there all right it must be there but when you're doing electric field and you're talking about electric potential energy as well as electric potential you do not by default put a negative there but that doesn't mean that you do not have negative you could have a negative all right it can be positive or negative so the thing here i'll just tell you first here is this uh whether w and v have positive or negative is determined by the sign of the charge just only okay whether w and v epe or v will have negative or positive is determined by the sign of the charges all right by default you do not put a negative there but that doesn't mean that they don't have negative they will have a neg they may be in some cases they have negative but that one is strictly determined by the sign of the charges itself it's say for potential your charge here is positive your potential will be positive if your charge here is negative that means your potential here will be negative okay so before i go to that let me just illustrate to you why is it that your gp your epe can be positive or negative this one i'll just give you a short example okay say for example uh, now you have a charge q which is positive all right and i talked to you about a case where you are at infinity okay now your epe at infinity will be zero because fe is zero you have no capacity to do work okay so say for example right now i'm talking about a particular distance r from the main charge this one being r here okay i put a positive test charge and I thought about wanting to move it from here to here or from here to here. Okay. Now you consider if I move from here to here, whether work is done on the test charge or whether work is done by the test charge. Say for example, right now this is positive. This is positive. The electric force acting on this positive test charge is going to be in this direction isn't it so now by right there's already an electric force acting in this direction if i had wanted to move it from here to here i actually don't need to purposely apply a force to push it from here to here there is already an electric force acting on it which if i leave it alone will push the charge from here to here so in my case here work is done by charge okay there is decrease in epe okay whatever work is done whether work is done on an object or whether work is done by an object if work is done on an object it will increase its energy if work is done by the object it will decrease its energy so in my case here if i have a positive test charge I already have an electric force acting on it. I don't need to do anything. I can just leave it alone. The charge will just be gradually pushed by the 
electric force from here to here. Now work is done by the charge. There will be decrease in energy. The decrease is actually the decrease in EPE. Okay. Then if I thought about moving from here to here, if I wanted to move from infinity to here, there is going to be a electric force opposing the motion. I want to move towards the left, but the electric force is preventing me from moving towards the left. So here, I actually have to purposely apply a force to overcome the repulsion here. In my case here, this is work done on charge. So there is increase in EPE. Okay. So this is the difference here. So in this sense here, what I'm interested to know is that would my value of EPE here be positive or negative? You see here, I already told you your EPE is zero. Okay. Here, if I move from here to here, from right to left, my EPE is zero. I move towards the left, my EPE is increasing. So the conclusion I'll get here is that EPE is positive value. Here is zero. If I go towards the left, I have increased in value. This is going to be positive. Okay. I will also get the same conclusion also if I consider the case at the top. If here is zero and I move towards the right, towards zero, I know that if I move towards the right, I have decreased in EPE. How can I decrease to zero in the first place? I can only decrease to zero if my value of EPE was positive. Okay, so if you consider this and this, you will still come to the same conclusion that your EPE is actually going to be positive. All right. Now, this is explaining the part why EPE is positive. You could also use a similar explanation to explain why is EPE negative. This one, say for example, I change the charge from positive to negative. All right. And again, I still talk about a case where I'm talking about from infinity. And I talk about a case where I'm interested at a point or distance R from the charge itself. Say so now I have a case where this is this, and then this is say your R. Okay, I have a positive test charge. All right, now this is negative, this is positive. There's going to be attractive forces between them. My Fe is going to be in this direction. So again, I want to talk about a case where I move the charge from here to here or from here to here. All right. Now in infinity, my EPE is going to be zero because Fe is zero. So there's no capacity to do work. So this one still maintains the same. Now for this one here, I want to consider a case where I move from here to here now, towards the right. Here, if I want to move from here to here, I actually have to overcome this attractive force, right? I, I'm trying to move towards the right, but the electric force is preventing me from moving towards the right. I actually have to overcome this attractive force. I actually have to purposely apply a force to overcome this attractive force. You are actually doing work on the charge. So here, this one it will be a case where work is done on charge. So if work is done on charge, there is EPE increase, right? Then after that, if I consider the other direction, if I now move from infinity to here, because by default, there's already a force in this direction towards the left, I actually don't need to apply any force. I don't need to purposely apply a force to have the charge move from here to here. This one, this electric force existing, will help me to move it from here to here already. You actually don't need to do any work. In your case here, you will say that work is done by charge. Work is done by charge. There is going to be EPE 
decrease. All right. Now, based on what you know here, what can you then say about the value of EPE here? Is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative? If you consider motion from the left towards the right, if your EPE is zero and then here is increasing, under what circumstances can your EPE increase from what under what circumstances can your EP increase to zero here if you're moving towards the right? This can only be possible if your EPE is negative value. Okay, if I move towards the right, my EP is increasing, but it's increasing to zero. The only way it would make sense if is if EPE is negative. All right, this is if you're moving towards the right. But what if I'm moving towards the left? Will I still get the same conclusion? You will actually still get the same conclusion. If you're starting off from zero here, and then you moving off towards the left causes your EP to decrease. If you're starting from zero and your EP starts dropping, wouldn't that tell you your EP is going to be negative? So you're still getting the same conclusion. So in your case, you will see here, your value of EPE can actually be positive it can actually be negative. It is different from your gravitational field. It is always going to be negative simply because your gravity in gravitational field, the only force you have is attractive force. So you're always going to get a negative value of GP, which is similar to this case here. Lah. You see that if your forces are attractive, you're going to get uh, EP value of negative, all right? But you know that for electric field, you are going to have two kinds of forces, either repulsive or attractive. So you will actually end up with two different kinds of EP values, either positive or negative, all right? So that's why I told you when you're talking about your electric field chapter, when you're calculating the potential, potential energies, there is no negative attached to it but that doesn't mean there's no negative it can be positive or negative which is determined by the signs of the charges itself okay that's the point i want to get across so far so good with that right and your definition of electric potential energy is defined as work done to bring a charge from infinity to a point in the electric field right that one is basically talking about this part. This is how your EPE was defined. If you look at the definition in your notes, it was defined as the work done to bring a charge from infinity to a point in the gravity uh, in the electric field, right? This is how your EPE was defined. Work done to bring a charge from infinity to a point in the electric field. Okay, that that work that you do is the EPE here which would make sense because you start off from zero here. Whatever work that you do to bring it from here to here would therefore be your EP value at that point itself. Okay, that's how you got your definition like that. So far so good. This is the understanding portion of it. Let me just save this diagram again for you guys. Okay, so then I'll just move on a bit more before I start to do the questions. Now, whatever you have here is actually just talking about EPE at a point. This one is potential at a point. Okay, the values of EP and potential at a point. Now, what I want to talk about is what if we ask you to find changes in energy between two points? So the thing here, I'll mentioned to you is that a good thing to use, a good equation to use when you're asked to find changes in electric potential energy, changes in energy between two points is this one. Now, if you look at this equation here, V is equals to EPE over Q. I told you W is your EPE, all right? This is the value at a point. This one is also value at a point, okay? EPE will be Q 
times v. This is talking to you about EPE value at a point. If you know the potential at the point, you multiply by the charge, you get the EP value at a point. But this can be further changed to this. Changes in EPE at uh, changes in EP between two points can be further expanded to become something like this. Okay, that's how I got this. Electric potential and energy at a point is equal to charge times your potential. If I want to find the change in potential energy between two points, it will be the charge times the change in potential between the two points. Okay, so this one is for this one. All right, so far so good with that. Okay, so that part is okay. Huh? Right, then this one is okay. Then I move on to the other one. Okay, now same thing as before, where you will be asked to find out electric potential energy or electric potentials at a point. Okay, for a case where you have two different charges. The analysis is similar to how you do for fuel strength as well as for electric force. Now since again, for example, I have the same two charges as before, charge A and charge B. I told you charge A will have its own electric field charge B will have its own electric field. So in if you bring them close to each other, the electric field A will combine with electric field due to B and will give you a new electric field, okay? So what, when you're considering the region between the two charges, the electric field here is really the combined field of A and B. If you want to find out the properties of this point, you need to combine you need to consider the individual effects due to each charge and then combine them together, all right? So when you consider the individual effects of each charge for potential energy and potential, there'll be something a bit different here. You need to realize that potential and potential energy are scalars. There is no direction to consider. They are scalars, there's no direction, okay? They may have a value of negative, as I mentioned to you before this, they, they may have a value of negative. But the thing here is that that negative is not telling you direction, it's an indication of value. What do I mean by indication of value and di not direction is this, if I give you a case of 5 Newton versus negative 5 Newton, negative 10 degrees and uh, in the case of say, 10 degrees centigrade versus negative 10 degrees centigrade. This one I know is vector. This one I know is scalar. Temperature is scalar. The, if I look at this one, the negative just tells me I have a force of 5 Newton acting opposite to this. Hence, I can say that this is an indication of direction. But when I'm talking about scalar, like say temperature here, negative, uh, 10 degrees centigrade and negative 10 degrees centigrade. The negative here is not indicating temperature is acting in opposite direction. It's an indication of value. So that is the significance of this statement here. Negative here has nothing to do with direction. It has something to do with value. And before this, I told you that whether your potentials or potential energy will be positive or negative depends on the sign of the charges itself, okay? So that part is okay. Now, so now if I talk about this one right now, I'm interested in the potential and potential energy. When I want to work out what is the resultant at a particular point P, I have to consider the individual effects of A, individual effects of B. Now, is there I want to talk about potential? I want to talk about potential due to A and potential due to B. Here at this point, there will be potential due to A but there's no direction. Here, there will be a potential due to B, and again, there's no direction. If I want to talk about the electric potential energy, I also could say the same thing. There will be a potential energy due to A, but no direction. Potential energy due to B, but no direction. So now, then what I can just do is that I know that V is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R, and then W is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught QQ over R. For this one here, 
whatever sign my V will have will be determined by the sign of the main charge. If this one is positive, A is positive, V A will be positive. If B is positive, VB will be positive. So in my case, it's just VP equals to VA plus VB. There's no negative here. And then if I want to talk about electric potential energy, it will be determined by the sign of these two charges. By default, I always use a positive, you always use a positive test charge in the electric field. So this one is always positive. So if this is positive, this is positive, W will obviously be positive. If this is positive, this is positive, obviously my WB will also be positive. Okay, so my WA and WB will be positive. So it's just WA plus WB. Okay, then now when I draw the graph, I will get this graph. All right, based on this equation here. So this one here, this graph here will tell me some interesting things, some interesting properties. Like in my case here, you will also be asked sometimes when they give you a graph and they ask you to determine whether the charges here have same sign or opposite sign. So in your case here, if you see that it's a potential or pot, uh, potential energy graph, you again look at the two ends here. You see here, both have same sign. Therefore, charges have same sign. Okay, actually it's more like this. Now. Both have positive sign. Therefore, charges have positive sign. Both charges have positive sign. Because again, as you can see here, if I go more towards here, the effects due to A will be larger. So whatever value I have here is determined by A. If I go more towards B, my effects due to B will be larger. Whatever I have here will be determined solely by B. Okay. So in my case, I see here, both have same sign, both charges have same sign. Both have, both V have same sign, both charges have same sign. Okay. That is what you can say here. Lah. And then just be careful that when you draw the graph here, this one will never be zero because positive plus with positive will never give you a negative. All right. Now then after that, there'll be a few things that you can also see from here. We could ask you to determine how is the motion of the object as it moves from one end to another end. Now, if you look at this one here, this one, W, I told you is EPE, right? You can look at it this way. If I go from here to here, my EPE is dropping. My KE should be increasing according to principle of conservation of energy. If I go from here to here, my EPE is increasing. So my KE is dropping. I could say that when I move from here to here, I am speeding up. And then when I move from here to here, I am slowing down. And then at this point here will be where I have max speed. Because if here to here I'm speeding up, then after here to here I suddenly slow down. That means I reach max speed here. So you get this. All right. You see the explanation here will be consistent with what you see here from page three, you will still get the same conclusion. All right. Then if you look at the other page, page six, if I told you that you have opposite sign of your charges, this one, let me just erase this one. Okay. If you have opposite sign of your charges, again, you will just have to consider the individual effects due to A and B. There are actually no directions for A and B. But then before you add them out, you need to first determine whether there's only going to there's going to be a positive and negative value to it. So as I mentioned to you, you have to look at the sign of the charges. The positive test charge itself is positive. For VA, it is determined by the sign of your main charge. This one will be positive. For BB, it's determined by your sign of your main charge. This is negative, so this one is negative. 
And then for WA is determined by the sign of both of your charges. Positive, positive, this one will be positive. For this one, when it involves sphere B, this is positive, negative. This one will give you negative. So when you add your charges up together, you will have a negative sign there. Okay, when you have a negative sign there, your graph will look like this. Okay, and from here, you will also be able to see whether your charges are having same sign or opposite sign. Here you see both V are opposite sign, therefore charges have opposite sign. Okay, you look at these two usually. You see that they are opposite sign, that means both charges have opposite sign. Okay, that's how you got that. And this one here, the last thing I just need to mention to you, if you have a positive test charge that is moving from here all the way to here and you're asked to describe its motion, just know that if you look from here to here, your EPE is dropping. So your KE is increasing. You are actually continuously speeding up from here to here. Okay. So there is no max speed here, so to speak, because there's no point where you suddenly slow down. Okay. So this is something that you just need to know beforehand. Then whatever you have here is basically just like a summary. When I was explaining this to you, I've explained to you some of the differences and some of the uh, similarities with gravitational field. So this one, I think I'll just skip. And I think it's better if I just have a look at some questions first for you guys. Okay, uh, can you just have a look at page 10? Have a look at page 10. We might as well do some questions on there before we do something else. Okay, have a look at page 10 of your worksheet. Okay, clear your drawing. Okay, now a solid metal sphere of radius r is isolated in space. The sphere is positively charged so that the electric potential at its surface is Vs. The electric field strength at the surface is Es. On the axis of figure 6.1, show the variation of the electric potential with distance x from the center of spheres for x equals to 0 to x equals to 3r. Now, this one here, they've already told you that you have a solid metal sphere isolated in space. Is positively charged. And they ask you to draw the variation of potential with distance and field strength with distance for the isolated charge. Now, this part is very important to know. This one tells you it is an isolated charge. Okay. Isolated charge will mean something like this. this is your positive charge is isolated, something like this. This is what we call an isolated charge. There isn't any other charge. Like the other questions you've done so far, the last few questions, like this one here, and like this one here, these are not considered isolated charges because there's another charge nearby. All right, you notice that the way you analyze them was you need to, to add the different quantities together, the E together, the V together, right? Now this one here is an isolated charge. You don't need to add anything up. You can just consider it as it is. Now, if your sphere is positively charged and then they tell you the electric potential of the surface is Vs and the electric field strength the surface is Es, they ask you to draw the variation of potential with distance. If you put a positive test charge here, this is now considered to be two point charges. Your equation 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R applies. Okay. Your graph that you draw here will be based on this equation. It is different from the other one that you've just seen. The one that you see here for the previous part, the graph that you draw for potential versus distance 
is for between two charges. It is not isolated charge. So the distinction I want to make here for you guys is that when you do your question, please make sure whether they're talking about an isolated charge or between two charges. For a case of between two existing charges, we don't consider an isolated charge. The equations that you use will be different. Like in your case, the equation you use is this one. Something plus with something, which in turn gives you this graph. But for an isolated charge, it's not the combination of different fields together. It's just a single field. You can use this one straight. So whatever equation you draw will be based on this equation itself. All right. So like in your case, I can just tell you that if your 1 4 pi epsilon naught is constant, if your 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and Q is constant, it means V is inversely proportional to R. All right. So that would mean that if V is inversely proportional to R, your R increase by two times, your V would decrease two times. Your R increase by three times, your V would decrease by three times. So what this means is that at two R, your V will be half its value, it will be 0 0.5 Vs. At 3R, your value of V will be a third of its value, will be 0 0.3 Vs. At R itself, you will have a value of Vs. So you need to draw that shape out. Okay, this is June 16, P4, 1. Question 6. Just draw out that little diagram there. you will get this all right just draw those points you will have this 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 and then after that you need to draw that curve like this okay the other thing you just need to know first is that anyway inside the sphere the potential is constant this one i will have to explain later okay this one is basically your distance x, your r is this one at the surface, okay, this one here. At the anyway below the surface of your sphere, your potential is constant. Okay, just draw that one first, I will explain a bit later, All right? Why your graph is an exponential decay is because of this. Why your values are 1, 2, 3 here is because of this equation also all right so you see this graph shape is different from the ones that you've just seen which is this one they're both talking about same graph potential versus distance but the shape is different you need to recognize what are they talking about if it's for isolated charge it will always be this because it's based on this equation if it's between two charges it will be this because it's based on this equation okay so just be mindful of that small difference. All right. So this part is okay. Then after that, I will move on to E, the field strength. Okay. Now for field strength, same thing also. Let me just uh, go to another one. Now for an isolated charge again, if I put a positive test charge here, it is now considered to be two point charges. I can again use the equation E equals to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R square directly. So here I know 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and Q are constant. That will mean that E is inversely proportional to R square, right? So when E is inversely proportional to R square, you can do the same analysis r increase two times your e must decrease four times because you have a square term here all right if your r increase by three times your e must decrease by nine times because of the square term here 
So in your case, this one will be 2R, 0.25 ES. This one will be 3R, I think it's 0. 1 divided by 9 is going to be 0 0.11 ES. And R itself will be ES. Right, so you look at your graph, you will get this. Okay, let me just write this one off. Okay, at the surface of the sphere, when it is R, you will have ES itself. All right, but at 2R, it will be 0 0.25, and then at 3R, it will be 0 0.11. So you get 1, 2, and then after that, your graph will be exponential because it's inversely like this. Okay, then the other thing here that you need to be careful about is that if you're talking about distances inside your sphere, your E is going to be zero. That one is fixed. E will be zero. Okay, so that is one thing you need to be careful about. Now, why is it that what your potential would be constant inside a sphere, but your pot, uh, your field strength would be zero inside a sphere? Why is it your potential is constant inside the sphere, but then it's zero inside? Why is it that your potential is constant inside the sphere, but your field strength is zero inside the sphere? Okay, so there is an explanation on that in page then the last page of your notes just give me maybe three or five minutes to explain this out before i close out your lesson for today okay now let me just give you this example here when you have a charged sphere your charged sphere is made out of conductor it will be correct to say they have free moving charge carriers that is correct to say that for the sake of your discussion i'll say that maybe you have a lot of positive charge carriers that are free to move about that is correct but the thing is that the charges are always uh, because they have the same charge they are repulsive they will repel each other if they come close to each other so their natural tendency is always to repel each other as far away as possible. Now, if they repel away as uh, they repel each other as far away as possible, what will happen is that they will all go towards the surface of the sphere, okay? Where they keep on repelling themselves until they no longer move, okay? So they no longer move. When they no longer move, we will say that there is no longer any resultant electric force on them. When there's no longer resultant electric force on them, the electric field strength on it is zero. Now, if you remember the definition of electric field, we, we, I told you that electric field, the definition is this. It is the region where an electric force is experienced by an electric charge, isn't it? you define an electric field as a region where a force is experienced by an electric charge. So when you look back at the case of a sphere, originally the charges are free to move about, but because they repel each other, they will repel each other as far away as possible. They go to the surface where they continue to repel each other until they stop moving. They reach something like an equilibrium state. Once they reach something like an equilibrium state, they no longer move. When they no longer move, that means there's no longer any resultant electric force acting on them. And by definition of electric field, where you say that electric field is only present when you have a force acting on the charge, here, because they don't move, they no longer have a force, so you will say that they don't have a electric field. Okay? Uh, then, when you have no resultant electric force on the charges, there's no electric field. When you have no electric field, your electric field strength is zero. That's why here we will tell you inside your sphere itself, your electric field strength is always zero. 
because the charges no longer move, they no longer move, there's no electric force on them, there's no electric field. There's no electric field, the field string is zero. Or you can also think of it by definition of electric field string. Like electric field string is Fe over Q, right? If your electric force is zero, obviously your field string is also zero. You can think of it both ways. By definition of electric field or by definition of field strength. If your electric force is zero, obviously your field strength is going to be zero. Okay. So this one is why it's always going to be zero inside. Now to explain the part why electric potential will be constant inside a charged uniform sphere, this one I will have to relate back to your equation just now. Now remember that I told you EPE is going to be charge times, wait, no. Okay, now maybe I talk about something else. In your other electric field in AS, remember when you're talking about work done on a charge is actually charge times potential difference, differences in potential between two points. Now, I explained to you in the previous part, for uniform spheres, there is no electric force because the charges already do not no longer move. When the, the charges no longer move, there's no electric force. No electric force means there's no capacity to do work. Okay, and then you learn in AS electric field work done on an isolated charge is equals to charge times potential difference. If you do not have force, you do not have work done. So that means your W here is zero. Your Q would have some non-zero value, but since this one is zero, that means your this one here will be zero. The, v, the delta V here is your potential difference or rather the change in potential okay if your w is zero then is zero your potential difference is zero that means there will be no change in potential okay potential difference being zero means there's no changes in potential so that's why your potential will be constant here therefore your potential remains constant okay that's the explanation why your potential is constant here from work done equals to charge times potential difference. If you do not have electric force, you have no work. When you have no work, your potential difference will be zero. That means you have no differences in potential. Okay, in other words, you have no differences in potential. I think this one is a better term to use. This one, you have no differences in potential. Therefore, your potential would remain constant. Okay, so that is why it's like that. That's why just now your graph that you draw inside the sphere, potential is constant, and inside the sphere, the field strength is zero. Your questions will normally just require you to explain why field strength is zero. They won't ask you to explain why potential is constant. So the questions on that we will do next week. All right.